Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. We um, shot a bunch of footage um, of stuff and a lot of it we're gonna show you in this video. Some stuff we're gonna show you in a, in a second video on, on this intake. Um, all the tests have been done. Well, we haven't shot, finished the second video of some of the dyno tests we're gonna do with it uh, afterwards. But um, so uh, just just sort of, a, this is sort of an intro, I'll let you know. Um, Nobody, nobody gave us any parts. Nobody asked us to test this. You know, we just did it. This is my own personal car, um, not a customer's car. Uh, I've been dynoing stuff and tuning for 20 plus years. So uh, this isn't my first go around. The engine is a, what I thought was a, you know, a good example of if, if, if this if manifold, you know, it lives up to its claims, then, you know, it's a big cubic inch motor. Um, you would think of, uh, if there's improvements on a stock engine, you know, uh, a, a modified larger displacement 416 LS3 with aftermarket heads and a, a, a good size comp cam in it. Uh, really should really benefit from this thing. So, you know, it was really, we just wanted to see, you know, what, what sort of, you know, comparison, uh, the stock manifold, which has been touted as being a, a really good all around manifold. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, with this video, we were going to go through and show you step-by-step -step installing it, but I'll be honest with you, the performance design did a great job with their instructions for the most part. Um, you know, the things, things not super easy to install, but it's not hard at all by any means. I mean, it's a little bit more just tedious than anything. It's not difficult. Um, and so anyways, uh, we, you know, I hope you enjoy this video and, and, uh, I, um, hope you get some good information. So thanks for watching. All right. So we're going to do kind of a comparison test here. We got the performance design LS re intake here or here with this is an uh, a stock ls3 intake manifold just a gm intake um so what we're gonna do is we've already dynoed the car with the stock intake on it and what we're gonna do is gonna swap these things out and, and see what kind of performance gains we can see um this one's supposed to make more power everywhere so we'll see that one of the things that we experienced on our engine was that it made peak power at right at like 6,000 RPMs. It didn't really fall off much after that. So we're really thinking that, you know, at some point this was a bit of a restriction on it. It's a big, you know, big inch motor. So one of the things that we are changing is the throttle body size. So if you look here, this is a 102 and it's a little over four inches. And then you look at this one, which is a 95. You know, it's really, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to tell by just, just measuring the, this bore here, but you know, it's, it's a quarter, this thing's probably, well, it's five, five millimeters. So it's about a quarter of an inch. I think six millimeters is a quarter of an inch. So it's almost a quarter of an inch bigger. It's supposed to flow a lot more. And, uh, so anyway, so we've got this thing, this big piece of Tupperware, by the way, we got this from pro touring store. And this is a Nick Williams, um, it's 102 or 103. I don't know where I'm which one it is, but anyway, so let's pull this bad boy open. Let's see what the hell's inside this thing, All right? Just a lid. Um, so as you can see, the, the, you know, a manifold's a manifold. These things are all similar. So this manifold over here looks a lot like this one inside. Uh, as you can see, the runners start here and the air flows to here and if you looked inside here they'd be open like these kind of trumpet things um but i'm assuming that these are longer and larger you know so if we take a measure to this then you know these little runners are you know a good 11 12 inches long where you know these runners are you know i don't know probably close to the same size but probably not <laughs> nearly that big so this thing's going to be a tricky install. I think you have to install it in pieces on the car where this one, man, I tell you what, this thing's easy to get on and off the car. Really just disconnect the cable, um, fuel lines, ejector connectors, map sensor, IAC, a couple plugs, boom, 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 thing came right off. 
This one's not gonna be quite so easy, but one of the things that we also we need to do is we're gonna convert this thing from a cable to a drive-by wire because the cable will not work with this manifold. And so, lucky running a dominator. So, we've got that all ready to go. Um, we've got a pedal. It's a GM pedal. And we also make a bracket for the second gen Camaro. And I'll show you that later on in the video uh, that mounts this thing to the, the stock location. So anyways, we're gonna see if we get this thing all fit up. All right, well, we did two pulls. And first pull, well, both pulls were right around 500 foot pounds, 498 the first pull, 500 the second pull torque, uh, 530 horsepower the first run, 534 the second run. So, I mean, they're pretty much, you know, you can attribute that to drivetrain heat. So do you wanna overlay the you want the original? The original run with the stock intake manifold. <laughs> so, yeah. So the yellow line. And the purple line. And the purple, purple line and yellow line are stock. No, isn't the, isn't the brown one? It's this a, purple one right here. Okay. Oh, that's, yeah, okay. Purple. Okay, yeah, that is purple. Blue and red. Right, so looking at this, the stock manifold appears to have made slightly more power up until, looks like the 5250, right? Where they, where the, the torque and the horsepower generally cross on a, on a well, not generally, always cross on a mm -hmm. dyno sheet. Pretty close. Right, so. A little bit above that. Right, and then above it, we they're really. They're almost did, identical. They're almost identical. 6300. Right, so, you know, the, 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 the performance design intake seemed to carry the horsepower Slightly longer, you know, um, one peaked at like 6,000, one peaked at like, what's that, 62, 6,300? So, um, i really not seen the gains that this manifold's supposed to do. It's, so, a, it's a big loss in the middle of the power band. It is, and if you look here in the, what is it? 3,000 3, to... 5,500. 5,500, yeah, in here, you know, we lost... 20 foot-pounds of torque. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, you got 473 on the stock manifold and 454 and 454. Right. So, not quite 20, just about 20 foot-pounds of torque. Right. So, yeah, I'm thinking that's not the gains that we were hoping for. I mean, I was really hoping for, the, you know, this thing to gain maybe 20 horsepower or something like that. So anyway, so you guys can see, here's the manifold installed on the car. So we'll do a follow up here. All right, so I'm assuming you've all been watching and if you've made it this far, appreciate it for watching this long, but um, you all seen the video. I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, so, you know, really at this point, we need to decide is do we care about the aesthetics or or whatnot? You know, I'm not here to bash on the the intake manifold. Um, I really think it's it, the quality of it is is really top notch. I mean, the piece there's a lot of engineering that went into just the manufacturing of it, let alone the the, the design of it. As far as the performance gains, just didn't see it. And I'll be honest with you, driving this thing um, on the street you know, that loss of power down low, you really feel it. Um, so, you know, it's probably something that we're probably not gonna keep on the car. And, and there's other reasons that we'll, we're gonna kind of cover in the, in the next video. And the reason why we're gonna make the next video is because um, one of the things that I didn't like was the drive-by wire throttle body. And it's nothing to do with the, this Nick Williams throttle body, it's, it's a good piece. The drivability with a big motor, with a big cam in it, 
um, is really compromised with the drive-by-wire. We're using a Holley uh, Dominator system on this thing, and the cable is just a lot easier and better to tune. I spent about a day and a half messing with this thing to get it to idle right and get it getting it to return to idle and not die when you pull up the stop lights or whatever. So one of the things that I did, and I'll show you in the next video here, that we're gonna make on the next video is I figured out how to put a cable driven throttle body on this thing. So the guys at Performance Design, I asked them about it when we initially, you know, were looking into this thing. And they, they, they acted like they didn't even know, oh, I don't even know if a cable one will fit. Well, it doesn't work. And, but we made a way to adapt, adapt it. So in our next video, we're going to show you, um, what we did, the bracket that we'll have available if you guys are interested in, in, in using this intake manifold with a cable driven throttle body. But what we're going to do, and I've always wanted to do this for forever, is we're going to do a throttle body test and we're going to test a 92 millimeter versus a 102. And we've got some of these just cheap Chinese Amazon throttle bodies. Um, this one's a 92 millimeter. Right now we've got the 102 on there. And I mean, that's a huge difference in airflow between these two. And I've always been curious to see what, what that'll do. I'm curious to see if maybe that was the, the power loss down low, maybe the bigger throttle body. I don't know. So before we take this thing off the car and, and put the stock manifold back on it, you know, we want to explore all avenues. I'd like to give this thing its, its due diligence. Um, so one of the things I also wanted to point out to you was that on this dyno sheet here, this is the stock intake in, in green and then the blue above it is the performance design manifold. And one of the things that we really, we saw was here's 6,000 RPMs. And we were really amazed that with this big motor and a big cam that it made peak power at 6,000 RPMs. Now it didn't really fall off abruptly at all. It just didn't carry power. Well, talking to some people that that we know in the industry, you know, and, and, and some of the is issues that we had on the dyno the first time was we had a little bit of old problem with oil control. So we took probably maybe half a quart of oil out of, out of the engine on the dyno. Um, we're now running it a full quart lower than what we had in there before. And I, I'll be honest with you, I think there's a chance that this power gain up here might be from windage. And there's some, a lot of good videos out there. Lake Speed Jr. does a video on, on you know, how much oil in the crankcase and they keep taking oil out and oil out and they make power, more power, more power and have better, um, uh, or actually they had better oil pressure control, but they lost power the more oil they put in the thing. And, and, and so I think we we're just overfilled and I think that might've been why we lost some of the power down here. But I'll be honest with you, the power we're losing down here, is a killer and and i and i feel it driving it i mean it's you know i mean it's 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 you know 20 foot pounds of torque from you know almost three thousand thirty five hundred here you know all the way to five thousand rpms and you know if we autocross this car that's the meat of the pie there you know this stuff up here even if it did i mean this is really you know right here at the very peak, you know, that's six or seven, eight horsepower. I mean, that's nice and all to carry the power like that, but it, I'd, I'd rather keep it down here. So anyways, in our next video, we're gonna show you what we did. To put, as you can see, there's a cable on this thing and uh, we'll show you what we did. And we're gonna test two different size throttle bodies. So anyways, thanks for watching and we'll wait for the next one.